Hello makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today we are going to review the Creality CR10. Stick around. Welcome back makers. Today I finally get to talk to you about a printer which has completely won me over in any way possible. The Creality CR10. Now this is the largest printer in terms of print volume that I have. And when Gearbest got in touch with me and asked me if I would be willing or interested in reviewing the CR10, I simply couldn't say no, especially after watching Preston, Uncle Jesse's and Chuck's success with their CR10, all of which you can view by following the links in the video description below. Now the printer comes in a form of a kit, which is pretty much around 90% assembled. So not exactly a, a full kit. I unboxed it and put it together during a live stream a few weeks back and I think it took me less than 45 minutes from the moment I opened the box to the moment I switched it on and started to print. Instructions were very straightforward and easy to follow with only a few parts that need to be put together. And apart from that, all the cables running from the printer to the external uh, control box are braided and connect via plugs, which make it extremely easy, handy, and also very neat. Now the CR10 boasts a whopping 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter build volume with an all extruded aluminum frame, which is surprisingly very sturdy. The Z axis runs on a single lead screw, which is questionable for the size. However, is actually quite effective and works very well with it. The control box houses all the electronics, including a 12 volt power supply. It has a graphics LCD with a turn dial. It takes micro SD card and also USB input for PC connectivity. Now, what is highly surprising is the fact that inside the control box, is an external MOSFET connected to the heat bed, which adds that layer of security that helps quite a lot. Now, prior to the live stream, two of my awesome viewers, Greg and Chris, sent me a bunch of SDL files, pre-sliced G-codes and factory files for Simplify 3D. Now, one of the pre-sliced G-codes was a calibration vase, which Greg had pre-sliced in order to work perfectly with the filament spool that was sent inside the box of the Creality CR10. I threw that in and started printing. I was instantly blown away at the quality that this thing can print with. The, whole, the overhangs on this vase are around 60 degrees. So the fact that those alone printed extremely well, already got me all excited about the possibilities of this printer. Following the live stream, I decided to take advantage of the build area of the heat bed and used it to mass produce some maker coins in preparation of the Bay Area Maker Fair, which by the way, are on a first come first serve basis. So if you want one, Come find me, I'll probably be anchored at the Matter Hackers booth and come and I'll give you one. If I have any left, I should have about a hundred by then. I threw in some copper PLA from 3D Prints, sliced 25 maker coins at a time and started printing. Needless to say, the CR10 did an absolutely fabulous job at it and kept on churning out making coins for a couple of days following that. Having found myself comfortable with the settings, I then decided that it's time to start printing large scale and decided to throw in some filamentum concrete gray extra fill PLA. And I wanted to print an oversized version of a mother and child model I had found on Thingiverse. 
This took about 18 hours to print and came out okay. It wasn't as good as I hoped, but nothing major and everything was fixable. I could see that retraction settings play quite a big role in the print quality as can be seen in the printed model. Wherever there was a retraction, there was kind of like over, over extrusion. So I just had to increase retraction. In fact, I increased it from five, I think to about six, six and a half millimeters uh, following this print. I also noticed a couple of layers had some Z banding, which also wasn't major and could be fixed. I was after all running the print at 17 millimeters a second. It was then time for me to go bigger and better. I grabbed a brand new roll of 3D Prints Red PLA and upscaled the iris box from Thingiverse. This thing took about 68, 68 and a half hours to print. And the only reason why I didn't print it any larger is because I was afraid that I would run out of filament. In fact, Simplify 3D estimated that the print should take around 290 meters of filament. Knowing that a spool has around 330 meters, I didn't want to risk it, so I stuck to that. And it seemed about right looking at the spool and how much was left in it. The tolerances actually worked very well and the print, as you can see, functioned properly as soon as I took it off um, the build plate and took off the locking notches at the bottom which it prints to hold it in place. This particular print actually turned out to be quite popular on Twitter and Instagram and I can see why. It's, it's an actual functional print after all as it's not the small iris box that I showed on, the, um, on a previous review. It's something that can be used and has now become a candy compartment and a conversation piece whenever we, has, we, have, we, has, we have guests over. It's just awesome. Now, I also printed this amazing Aria the Dragon right over here. And this was printed in Rigid Ink Orange PETG and it has some velocity painting effects on it. I featured it on the velocity painting episode I recently updated. Um, so I will leave a link in the video description so you can watch it and get the full details of this print. Once that was done, I then decided I need to go even bigger. I swapped the orange PETG to the gorgeous red PETG, also by Rigid Ink, and I scaled up a vase <laughs> I found on Thingiverse. Now, seeing as with such large prints, you might get some form of layer warping due to lack of rigidity and cooling fan blowing on it. It usually is better to print large scale vases with two perimeters rather than one. However, in this case, I decided to increase the extrusion width of the perimeter to 140%. I also slowed down the speed to 55 millimeters a second, and I completely switched off the part cooling fan in order to assist layer adhesion a bit more. I also increased the hot end temperature to 240 degrees from the recommended maximum of, I think it's about 230. Um, so it can compensate for the additional extrusion and give it time to properly melt the filament. The results, as you can see, absolutely phenomenal. This, this is exactly how vases should be printed. It's, it's not that small vases are not useful or anything, but I mean, come on, it's massive. It's bigger than my head. <laughs> and this makes them more than a functional print, but also a centerpiece in any room that they are placed in. Now, following a few tweets that I did on uh, Twitter, well, with the uh, rigiding PTG translucent red, 
I got a bit of a ping from uh, a guy named Carmelo Nazario. He's a maker, a designer, and an artist based in New York. And the tweet was like, I, do you have anything left from that spool? So I started chatting to him and he wanted to send me something that I could print in this gorgeous filament. As soon as I saw what it was, I happily obliged. That design was Yoshi and it turned out to be probably one of the sexiest Yoshis you will ever see in your life. It came out gorgeous. This was printed at 0.2 millimeter layer heights. Now, to be completely honest, as I was printing this, I uh, kept on going back to Simplify 3D to make sure that I did choose, in fact, 0.2 millimeter layer height because the layers were so smooth that I thought it was 0.15. I thought I said it lower by mistake. But no, it printed at 0.2 millimeter layer height and that is kind of the potential of this printer. The layers lay down really nice and smooth. Now, this little guy right here is available to almost everyone. Now, while I always post links to everything I print so you guys can print them as with everything I have here, this is not available freely. The, uh, the way you can get your hands on a model of Yoshi is to become a patron of Carmelo Nazario, which I highly recommend because he is a brilliant designer. Once you become his patron, you will have access to Yoshi. So, my final thoughts on this printer. Oh boy. <laughs> I, you know guys, I don't usually tell you I recommend you buy this printer. I give you my thoughts and then you can decide what to do with those thoughts. But I so recommend this printer to anyone who wants a big volume printer but doesn't want to break the bank. Okay, it's not the best printer out there, but I mean, at under 400 euros, you can't really argue with it, especially considering the print quality it produces, and not to mention the safety aspect of it, of having the external MOSFET for the heat bed. It, it has additional features. It has the filament swap function and the fact that it is reliable. I have no problem whatsoever trusting it to finish a 70 plus hour print. The only limitation I have is the size of the spool of the filament, meaning I will have to invest in larger size spools for bigger prints. Now, what I don't like about this printer, not much to be completely honest, um, but as I always say, no printer is perfect. And yep, this is another case. Nothing out of this world, but one thing that I find is a setback for this printer is the power supply. With such a build volume on the heat bed, a 12 volt power supply is definitely not ideal. And running a print with PETG that requires the heat bed to be at 70 degrees, it will take the CR10 the better part of 10 possibly more minutes to actually heat up the large build plate that it has. And it, it takes a while to start going. And now I know the MOSFET assists that power delivery, but converting it to 24 volts would definitely be so much better. The other minor thing that kind of bugs me is the microSD. I, I would prefer if it, if it took standard SD cards, but to be completely honest, I fixed that by ordering some microSD to SD card converter cables. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it, to be honest. It, it turned out to be an absolutely great printer, and I can honestly see what all the rave is about. I do intend to get my hands on the CR10's big brother. Yes, there, there is a bigger version on the market with a whopping 500 by 500 by 500 millimeter build volume, which costs about a thousand euros. Kind of steep, but man, so worth it if it has the same print quality. The only issue I see with that is, well, 
the size of such printers instigate you to print big things, meaning that you won't print too many things as each print will take days to finish. So that is it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will leave an, uh, an affiliate link in the video description to Gearbest and the Creality CR10 if you're interested to find out more. I will try to get you guys a discount code um, in order to sort of just sweeten the deal, but I can't promise anything. The best thing I would suggest is to keep checking the video description for any updates that I might get from Gearbest. Now, full disclosure, Gearbest did send this printer to me for review at no cost, other than the import taxes I paid for myself. And I will get to keep it, even if I had to pay for it, to be completely honest. Other than that, I was not compensated in any way for this printer, and all thoughts on the review are my own. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. Please leave a comment with any questions or suggestions you may have on what I can oversize and I'll get to it after the Bay Area Maker Fair because by the time you're watching this I'm already in the US. Click on the like if you enjoyed this review, subscribe and share and in the meantime as always happy making guys!